there's several differences between the ISIS attacks, you know, that's happening around the world and the attacks that's happening in Nigeria, such as by Boko Haram. And I think a lot of things, the major thing that makes a difference is the coverage and and what's being said and done about it. Um, you know, ISIS has been front and center. You can barely catch your local news for thinking about what's happening in world news uh, probably for the first time in a couple years. But it's interesting to me because Boko Haram has been named as the most dangerous terrorist group in the world right now. So why isn't that where the main focus is? I mean, we had back-to-back -back bombings, and I'm not talking about a Drake track in Nigeria, yet there was no coverage of that. I mean, in Mali, there was an attack, you know, at a five-star hotel. So, of course, that got a little bit of coverage and because there were some U.N. officials there. So there were different people from the U.S., Turkey, several different countries. And it was a joint effort. And it was just as quickly as it started this morning, it's already over. I mean, they were easily able to get into the facility because they had some government tags on the vehicle. You know, one of the guards said that by the time they got in, it happened so swiftly, he didn't even know how many people were there. He did he wasn't able to get any any facts. It happened so swiftly he didn't even know what happened or what hit him until he was hit by gunfire. And now I think they're trying to tie this all in. You know, the main thing they wanted to say was that the the perpetrators were outside or the terrorists were outside and they were saying Alawa Akbar uh, you know God is great however we have people that were inside the hotel that actually heard them speaking English there was no Arabic being speaking there was no other language being speaking outside of English that's what that's what was being told by the people that were inside there's no more hostage situation the hostages have all been released you know um <clears throat> I, I think it's pretty sad um, not to take anything away from the Paris attacks but to be honest completely honest with you I mean the pictures worth a thousand words I, there's not too many pictures that show the actual carnage and the blood and the terror we just saw but it looked like to me a bunch of false flags um, versus what's happened in Nigeria and Kenya and Mali and Kano I mean you're actually seeing the massacres you're seeing these these murders over the last six years of Boko Haram being in Nigeria there's been over 20,000 people killed 20,000 killed so <clears throat> and we're seeing it and the school attack in Kenya you saw the kids the deaths you saw the wreckage you, you, you got to see exactly what happened when they show pictures of Syria I think it's sick and sad for people to say for them to go home there's no home to go to I mean the walls have been blown off there's nothing left there's that there's nothing there that's actually real um what i seen from the images from paris i mean it looked like a hollywood movie scene i mean there was actually a picture of somebody that was on the ground supposedly dead but you saw the light of the camera so you were film recording and speaking of that where is the individual film recording where is the you know the actual tragedy I mean you saw people when they looked upset visibly upset but there was no tears there was no agony you see the pain I'm talking about years and years and years of pain and oppression in, in the faces and the pictures you know from Africa but I guess you know I guess it goes back to what's being painted the media paints of uh, the propaganda and the media paints the picture they want you to see and they instill the fear and they instill the reactions. But if you're going to pray, pray for Africa.